I spent 100 days in Terraria Storia mod. This mod brings a ton of great vanilla style bosses and a new final challenge. Can I move? My goals are simple. One, to defeat the final boss of Thorium, the Primordials. Two, to absolutely destroy all the other Thorium bosses. And three, to wield Mjolnir, the ultimate weapon in Thorium. Can I beat all of these bosses and craft Thor's hammer or will I give up after dying too much? <laughs> Enough of me talking, here's the video. On day 1 and 3, I spawned in and already began developing Crippling Depression. I found a chest and inside was a spear and this spear was gonna be used to pop this desire to continue living. I found a golden rabbit and since I couldn't have it, I donated it to charity. And ended up dropping the rabbit foot item which increased the amount of gold that I could get. So honestly, this thing could probably might literally double my gold right now. But anyway, our goal right now was to fight the Thunderbird boss in the desert. This was our first Thorium boss. I crafted a whistle for the bard class and I began playing a classical masterpiece. I wanted to focus more on building during these 100 days because I actually really want to improve my building skills. So I tried to make this house look nicer and to be fair, it looks probably even worse than when I started. So I'll save the building for later. I went towards the snow biome and I found some rare life quartz ore, which is completely useless to me. Enemies were a pain in the butt to kill, but they dropped icy shards, which could be used for crafting armor. While cave diving, I actually found a snowball cannon and this thing was actually like ridiculously strong. I didn't know that snowballs did so much damage, but hey, to be fair, if someone threw some balls at me, I think I'd die too. I was able to find a ruby, so now I can actually test fight the king slime soon, so that'd be pretty nice but anyway i went back home and i made the icy chest plate and used the snowball cannon to look at that ball power i made the icy helmet and i went to go get some sand to make the sleep capsule which is basically like a bed in minecraft so now we can actually skip the night so we don't have to wait around when it's nighttime to explore i crafted a platinum crown and i started going to the snow biome because that's where the crimson is at and i found this snowball enemy thing at the same time but anyway i made the king slime spawner and i made the icy legs to finish the icy armor set look at that defense i made a single platform arena and i summoned the king slime only for this to happen no f***ing way. I truly do hate this game. On day 46, I decided to just go after the first Thorium boss instead because, you know, I, I didn't have another ruby to make another King Slime Slime. So anyway, to spawn this Thunderbird boss, you have to go into the desert and I got the summon materials. It was really easy and I made a little mini arena above the sand. When I spawned in the bird, it summoned a lot of lightning strikes from the sky and spawned its little hatchlings. It started dashing towards me several times and I had a hard time dodging that, but it was okay. It also summoned thunderstorms on the platform, but I was able to also avoid that. Not gonna lie, the snowball cannon's fast fire and high damage let me move around and avoid all the attacks and at the end, I won. The Thunderbird dropped this saxophone thing. I, I don't know what it's called. Uh, you can try to pronounce it, but this thing sounded pretty funny and it was actually pretty good. You know, the Bard class is definitely an interesting class, but too bad we're not playing Bard, we're playing Summoner. I killed the Thunderbird again and I went back home. I crafted some sandstone tools using the sandstone ingots from the boss and I started making some sandstone armor. I had to kill the Thunderbird one more time to get the Storm Hatchling Staff and I did get it. And now I had a ranged snowball cannon, a Bard saxophone, melee slash thrower armor. Talk about multi class, but that night a Blood Moon occurred and a mini boss called Patchwork appeared. I was able to easily kill him and he dropped the book that summoned these skull hands from the ground. So now I have a mage weapon as well. When I went back home, I made the full sandstone armor and I got the set bonus of having an extra jump. And honestly, the mobility was so much better that I just used this armor set. Since I was going to play summoner, I started looking for the earliest summoner set and it was called the living wood armor. I needed living wood leaves though and I couldn't get that, but I can just make a living leaf wand and then mine the leaves. And so I made the full set of living wood armor. And I know that I said I was going to build, but I need my NPCs. So I made this mini apartment complex thing that I'll re probably replace later. But anyway, don't worry about it. So now day seven to nine, the next Thorium boss to was the queen jellyfish in the ocean. I started building my elevator and while down there I found this golden wolf monster and after killing it I got this thing called a vanquisher metal. A new NPC also came called the cobbler who sold me some new drip and a confused zombie NPC called rot gut. I also got some thorium ore. I kept mining down and was getting stronger. I also got some heart crystals and I found a golden slime this time. Killing it also gave me another vanquisher metal. But anyway I went back home and made another king slime spawner and I respawned it for a rematch and because I had sandstone armor there was no way I was gonna lose and after a while I killed it. I got a bunch of thrower weapons but I didn't really care anyway so I went to the crimson that day to make the spawner for the eye cthulhu while there i broke two orbs because i wanted to spawn in the meteor while waiting for nighttime i went to rock cut to check out his items and he was selling this grim pointer item which pointed towards a boss room apparently and i was like whoa that's kind of cool so i bought the pointer and it led down into my elevator but before i could follow this mr slime man thing came back but anyway i went back to following the pointer and while mining i ran into a golden bat but anyway i continued mining and i ran into this scarlet chest and i had this really good bard accessory but i don't need it but i kept going through and i eventually found this chamber i didn't know what to do so i just went home and i killed the eye cthulhu easy peasy after killing the Eye of Cthulhu, I went back into the chamber with the spawn materials and I actually interacted with this altar and then the Viscount boss spawned. I didn't expect to beat it, but it actually wasn't so bad. It shot these echolocation attacks and these period blood orbs, but honestly my DPS wasn't high enough to last and eventually my health just dropped. 
From day 10 to 12, I went into the Crimson Biome and I began building my arena. I used the power of music to fight off these blood spiders, and when I was ready to fight the Brain of Cthulhu, I threw dynamite into the pit where the last Crimson Heart was, and I started firing snowballs. I used the power of music and my book of skull hands, and I easily took out the guy. And after the fight, I gathered some cobwebs to make this new bard armor set called the Jester Set, and this armor set looks really, really cool. I went towards east, and I actually found the meteor that I wanted, so I used the Vein Miter, and wow, that is... That's nice. I went into the ice caverns and I found this life crystal mimic which did not trick my 300 IQ eyes. But anyway, since I had bard armor, I made a tambourine at home and whenever I right clicked with it, it would do this little cute jingle. But anyway, I used some of that meteorite to make a meteorite oboe and astro summoner armor. Following this, I crafted the bleeding heart sentry staff and the meteor head summon staff and I farmed a blood moon that same night. On the morning of day 13 to 15, the goblin army attacked and so I slaughtered them. I got a bunch of these things called U wood and I bought the arcane armor crafting station and here I crafted the falconer's cane which is kind of like a summoner banner and it empowered my minions whenever I stood near it. So that was really cool. I went to the desert and I used the vein miner on the fossils and with, and with the gems, I started making my magic storage system. Afterwards, the tracker NPC arrived and I was able to trade some of my vanquisher medals with him. During this time, I tried to mine and get the Hermes boots, but I literally just couldn't get them. So I took the alternate route and I went up to the sky to get some harpy feathers because you can craft Hermes boots with these feathers. After leaping out of the literal sky to catch them, I found the goblin tinkerer and I made the lightning boots. With this, I began making an ocean arena for the queen jellyfish boss. I finished the arena and I crafted the boss spawner. Upon summoning the queen jellyfish, she fired a decent amount of projectiles and minions at me, but it was okay because I kept looping her. Occasionally, she would summon this large tornado, but it was actually pretty easy to counter it, and after the battle, an NPC came out of the jellyfish. I went down beneath the ocean to a new biome of fish and aquatic life. I mined some aquate ore, which I did not need, and I just went home. Eventually, I would go back to this biome for another boss and another rune, so, but that's for later. On day 16, I killed the queen again, and I got an item that gave me unlimited glow sticks in exchange for mana, which was kind of cool, I guess. The next boss I would usually fight would be the skeleton man, but but instead, I'm gonna go back to that chamber and battle the Viscount again. I slowly made my way into the dark chamber and I saw the lava everywhere and I prepared myself for the fight and summoned the Viscount. Like I said earlier, the Viscount had these echolocation effects and period blood attacks. And guess what? It would also bounce around the room. But honestly, it wasn't so bad to actually kill the guy. Come on, it's so close to dying, minions! Please! What am I doing? I'm a bat! I'm a bat! What? What? Minions. Oh! And after killing him, he actually dropped a bat summon item that could heal me based on blood storage, which was actually cool and I totally understood. It also dropped this really cool bat transformation item and let me just show you my reaction to it. <laughs> Check us out! But yeah, while preparing to fight the skeleton man, I killed the Viscount one more time. On day 17 to 19, I made a typical arena and I waited for night. And after that, I summoned the Bone Man and I killed him easy peasy. I went down into the dungeon and I started accumulating new items called Dark Steel Ingots and Spirit Fragments. These items are going to be used for a new armor set for the summoner. While getting these resources, I was actually attacked by a Minotaur, which was a part of the tractor bounties. I also ran into this strange mirror that disappeared and I'll totally revisit later in the future. But anyway, I went back home and I made a Skull Sentry item and Spirit Trapper armor. I tested the Skull Sentry on the King Slime and it shot lasers and it was pretty decent so yeah. But anyway the next bosses on the boss list were the Marble and Granite Biome bosses and honestly I'm not gonna lie I didn't really expect much from them. I went to investigate and... The Marble Biome boss was the Berry Champion and he absolutely destroyed me. I made and finished an arena but I still... This guy was absolutely beating my butt, bro. He was fast as heck and had these spectral projections. So I actually had to make my arena bigger and then I summoned it one more time. It was definitely more harder because this boss was just ridiculously fast. But anyway, whenever it summoned these apparitions of itself, the best thing I could do was dodge while doing damage. But then again, this was a DPS race that I did not plan to lose. After killing the berry champion, I got some early game wings, and man oh man, do these look really cool. There was also a granite biome right next to the marble biome, so I went to fight the boss. This boss was the granite energy storm boss, and it killed me, but it was okay because I came back and I fought it. I shot a lot of projectiles and did a ton of dashing, but I kept my guard up and eventually the boss died, so yeah, nice. Now before going to hard mode, I had a few more bosses to kill. On day 20 to day 22, I went hunting for the corpse blue mini boss in the jungle, and I actually found it, and I died to it like immediately. So I had to go back to the jungle, and I exacted my revenge and added it to my boss list. And now before challenge, the wall of flesh, the final boss to kill was the scar yeah, was the star scouter boss. I waited by the meteors for a strange UFO to come and scout the area, and when it finally came, I killed it and I got some strange technology. I used this to make the boss spawner and I took up to the skies to spawn the star scouter. Now the star scouter kind of was like the Martian Madness saucer, but it was way more weaker. I dodged the projectiles as best as I could, and things started to actually look pretty bad. So I actually had to jump down from my platform and heal at the nurse, and I had to keep flying around to avoid its large amount of projectiles, and you know, eventually I killed it, so it was cool. After I destroyed the boss, I decided to change my profession to a contractor and build a house. It took an entire half hour, but after finishing it, I was able to transform into a squirrel. So uh, check it out. I kind of finished the house, but I kind of also gave up. But anyway, I started making a wall of flesh arena and... 
I took some time to upgrade my storage system and I also ran out of snowballs. I went down into hell and I made my platform longer and switched to the spirit trapper mask instead to swap out my million slots for a sentry slot. This way I could summon more of these UFO lasers that I got from the scar scouter boss. I was a bit unlucky at first. Then I was able to get a lucky run and I killed the wall of flesh by just running and spamming my UFOs and my mana potion. But anyway, with the death of the squishy wall, a new NPC called Balthazar came and I got this new goat pet and I went to destroy some yummy demon altars. On day 23 to day 27, the first hard mode boss from Thorium that I was going to kill was an interdimensional being called Cosnix. But before that, I got this really cute bunny pet while I was getting some hellstone to make a hellstone pickaxe. But anyway, I progressed through the hard mode ores and I began upgrading my accessories. I combined and I created a strong summoner accessory that I could not pronounce and there wasn't a direct upgrade to summoner armor so I had to settle with this flesh armor instead. To craft this armor, I needed Iker and Souls of Night. I began collecting these materials and I began crafting the flesh for this armor. In the process of farming this said flesh, I gathered Molten Residue from Hell to upgrade my summon item. And after getting all of the flesh and Molten Residue, I crafted the full flesh armor set and the Draconic Magma Summon Staff. This flesh armor had a pretty unique set bonus. As you do damage, flesh would fall off and you could pick it up to heal, which was very important for future boss battles. On day 28 to 29, the Goblin Army visited my house and after a quick slaughter fest, I received a Shadow Flame Knife and crafted flesh wings. I took some time to mine some Hellstone as as well as upgrading my storage system, but once more, gathered Souls of Night for the Cosmic Spawner and made my way down to hell. And then, I spawned Cosmic, the Fallen Beholder. To be fair, Cosmic wasn't too hard, but it was definitely a tricky battle. I circled the boss and it also shot circularly at me, but, but other than its occasional laser, I was able to dodge most of its attacks. During its second phase, the lava started rising up and I started to run in a linear direction to avoid Cosmic until eventually I took it down. With his death, I got the Grand Thorium Armor and the Mirror of the Beholder, which functions as a deadly item that I was way too lazy to use. But anyway, I noticed that Cosmic's death enraged the Abyssal Sea, so I traveled back to check the water and... But while scavenging the abyss, I was able to gather these crystal wave items, and basically it's crystal cocaine, because these things improve my speed by 100% permanently. And to be fair, I didn't even need Hermes boots anymore. On day 30 to day 31, I spent this time building this house, which took a very long time. You know, I tried my best. I thought it looked pretty neat for these, you know, abstract characters. But anyway, I got bored of building, and I summoned the Destroyer. I knew that I was definitely severely undergeared, but I didn't care. I had something new now. It was something that I've acquired from playing Calamity. It started with S, and it sounds like kill. That's right. I'm stupid. But anyway, during the battle, I utilized a simple strategy to kill the destroyer. It was called horizontally running away and damaging it. And it worked, surprisingly. On day 32 to day 34, I bought a sentry summon called the Eon Staff, and this thing apparently summoned Valifor, which is a very cool but horrible sentry because, you know, maybe I just suck at using this guy. All he does is shoot out air and an occasional laser. I wanted a new summon item, so I was gonna fight Cosmix for it, but I needed a few more souls of night. So I ended up going to farm some. And I also ran into a mimic on the surface of the world, and I also got a new ore called Valadium, which was useful to my endeavor. While farming, death approached me. To counter death, I bought a new summon item from the Steampunk, which was a literal flying machine gun. I made the boss summon for Cosmix, and I slaughtered them until I got the summon item for these little baby Cosmixes. But honestly, it was a waste of time, because the flying machine gun is actually just way more better. But anyway, I made the Frostbark boots, and I actually was able to combine both of the boots, but I needed all of the souls from the mechanical bosses. To, to do so. So I was gonna go fight the twins, so I went to get some souls of life for the spawner, and I accidentally got a hollowed key, which was kind of cool, but anyway. But anyway, at night, I summoned the twins, and let me tell you, this was absolutely insane. Because not only did I do terrible damage, but since I couldn't focus kill the bosses, I had to take on both of them in their enraged states. This boss was super intense, and I had a few close calls and almost died, but definitely the flesh armor saved my ass so many times. After I killed Fire Boy, Laser Boy was left, and I almost died. But like I said, the flesh armor saved me when I was at about 7 HP, which was absolutely Absolutely crazy. And with that, I killed the twins. After the long and hard battle, I went to challenge Skeletron Prime, and in terms of DPS, this is definitely going to be the hardest battle based off of damage, because Skeletron Prime is tanky as hell and I barely did any DPS, but it's okay because after circling the Metal Skeleton Man, I killed him. On day 34 to 36, after killing the Metal Skeleton, I was able to craft the Firestorm Boots. I got some more Souls of the Night because I wanted to make another summon item and check this summon item out. This was called the Valkyrie Blade Summon Item, and just... I mean, just look at it. I tested it out against the King Slime, and honestly, it is not bad at all. And I realized I was progressing too fast. So I wanted to wait before slaughtering Plantera. I went to the Weapon Swift, and I hired a literal demon, which was pretty cool, and I'm pretty sure it was infinite as long as I didn't die. But you know me, I die too much. I finally had access to an upgraded summoner set. So I went to the jungle to get some biomatter and green ore for this. I upgraded my Adamantite Forge into the Soul Forge, and while farming for this biomatter slash green ore, I was able to craft the full set of Bloom Armor. This set offered 
a snug healing bonus whenever your minions do damage, just like the Spectre armor, and that may or may not be overpowered. I needed some new wings with this new armor set, so while farming some wyverns, I accidentally disintegrated one. But anyway, I got some souls of light and night and was able to craft some new wings. And these are what they look like. These are called subspace wings, and I look like an intergalactic threat now. On day 37 to 40, I went to explore the Abyssal Sea again for an artifact. I actually missed the boss in the boss list, and it apparently only spawns during a blizzard, so I went to the Abyssal Sea to find an artifact that summons rain. Now, even though the seas were buffed, these new summons and my new armor made it really, really easy to navigate through the ocean, and I was able to find the rain stone and use it to summon the blizzard. While waiting in the blizzard, I found an ice golem, and I quickly found the spawner for the Borean Strider boss and wiped it off the face of the earth. After I killed it, I spawned in another one, and I also killed that one as well. After killing the ice golem, I actually had access to craft another summon item. Now, this thing is actually really cool because it turns me into the literal avatar, and I'll show you. I summoned a sandstorm, and I purified the desert because I needed to kill desert elementals to get their drops. I forgot what they dropped. But anyway, after killing and getting all of the materials I needed, I crafted the Stellar Summon Staff. And check me out, dude. I am the literal avatar right now. I can shoot out rocks and stuff. But anyway, after that, I went to farm for some pirate maps, and it took a while, but actually after getting them, I summoned the pirates and proceeded to commit genocide on them. I also tested out the avatar staff, and yeah, it looks really cool, but it's actually not as practical as it seems, which is such a shame, but anyway, it doesn't matter. Since I wanted to kill time and, you know, avoid killing Plantera, I decided to go bounty hunting. One of the bounties was to kill a spider in the tundra, and I found this brown recluse spider bounty, and I also killed a pig brawn for another bounty. I went back home to see what I can get, and I got a recipe for the cook. I got a sand pouch, which is like a really weak rod of discord, but that's actually pretty cool. And the best item yet, a pet that spits out literal money based on how much damage I do. I went to test out this pet and honestly look at it. I mean, look at the money, dude. Look at it. But anyway, I got bored of bounty hunting and I went to the dungeon to kill the illusionist boss, which spawned from that strange mirror that I never touched back then, and I just killed him instantly. I also wiped out that old one's army, and as you can tell, I was progressing way too fast. So whatever, let's go kill Plantera. From day 41 to 45, to stop myself from progressing so much, I spent this time building another house. Now, this was actually my biggest house project yet, because I've never built this much. But hey, man, we gotta we gotta stop progressing somehow, so we might as well just actually build. So yeah, I used a lot of blocks for this build and a lot of inspiration from Google Images, but it came out like this. And I really don't know what to put in this house, but personally to me, it looks pretty cool. And I like it, so um... Yeah. On day 46, I went life root hunting and I realized that I was missing a boss. There was this boss that I completely forgot about called the Lich. So I made the boss summon and I brought forth this Lich boss. The red hooded boss started to slowly approach me with a barrier as I shot my weapons at it and I circled it. His defense wasn't the best because my Valkyrie blades just tore right through, man. And when things were getting more serious, the Lich began teleporting and shooting orbs while shooting aerial projectiles at the same time. And as it approached death, the Lich transformed into a Grim Reaper until it got annihilated by yours truly. I got the Phantom One, which shot this okay, laser, but it was, you know, it was okay, you know, I, I used it. I tried doing the pumpkin moon, but I didn't really get far, which means that I needed an upgrade. Introducing our new upgrade, rainbow armor. Now, our next goal was to get terrarium armor, which is made out of terrarium cores. Now, the problem with making a terrarium core is that you need a lot of ores. These are basically like almost every single hard mode and pre-hard mode ingot to make one. So, um, anyway, to do that, we actually need to kill Plantera to get access to ectoplasm. So, on day 47, I went to the jungle, and I blew up the jungle for some space before ultimately slaughtering Plantera. On day 48 to 50, I decided to do more side quest stuff to experience more terraria and i started with the next best thing explosions so i went to blow up my spawn i decided to place some mud in the area to make a mushroom biome and while doing this i accidentally summoned plantera and it got destroyed but since i killed plantera i went to upgrade my gear i began making a house for the witch doctor to get summon accessories later in the playthrough and when the cyborg arrived i bought some nanites to make a new summon item i crafted the rude one summon item and i tested it out against king slime it was a sentry that had four modes a pulse mode laser mode buster mode which was my personal favorite and a spread mode i killed plantera to get the pygmy staff and then I went to buy the Hercules Beetle from the Witch Doctor. I went over to the dungeon to get some ectoplasm as I planned to do with the Pumpkin Moon. From day 51 to 53, while well farming for this ectoplasm, I got this gateway mirror item that I'll just test later, but apparently I can use it to teleport from two different locations. But like I mentioned earlier, we can finally start making terrarium armor. I wanted to get a stronger summon before I got the materials though because the dungeon was absolutely just shredding me. So I went to the Lizard Temple and I killed Golem a few times because I needed to get the Sunstone to get this new summon item. But anyway, I got the Sunstone and I crafted the Bloody Pagan Summon Stat. I summoned the destroyer to see how the dps was but it was it was okay because for some reason the summoner ai in this game was weird uh, they wouldn't attack unless you were like standing somewhat still and close to the boss so it limited a ton of the damage potential on day 54 i was waiting for the truffle to move in so i decided to kill most of my npcs to accommodate for the living space i killed the lunatic cultist in order to get the ancient manipulator crafting station and i got a ton of cool mage weapons which were useless to me but i took the stage into my storage system and i tried to create some terrarium cores but i was still I missing something missing. and i didn't know what and it took me a solid 10 minutes to figure out that i just needed some hellstone and then after that i needed ectoplasm and then after that i needed orichalcum but yeah on day 55 to 57 i made my first batches of terrarium cores and it was enough to make a new summon item i crafted the enigma staff and 
Oh yeah, we have rainbow laser orbs. I tested it out against the king slime and noise. I need to chlorify to make more cores and I also need to get ectoplasm. But anyway, I summoned the pumpkin moon to get the necromantic scroll and after getting it, I made the papyrus scarab. Then I made another batch of terrarium cores and I made the full terrarium armor and pickaxe. I also crafted the master ninja gear and I reforged most of my accessories to menacing. On day 58 to 59, I went to destroy the solar pillar and after its death, it dropped actually a few more lunar fragments for the other classes. The white dwarf, celestial, and shooting star fragments, which are respectively for the bard, healer, or something like that, I don't remember. I killed the vortex pillar, and I also just completely forgot to explore the aquatic depths after Plantera, so yeah, and I also forgot there was an abyss boss too, so yeah, and I also forgot to get a hundred potion when I was at the abyss, so I tested out my gateway glass to go home and get the potion, and this thing was actually really cool. But anyway, I was looking for this specific boss that would spawn the abyss boss. And when I found these fishies, this happened. And I'm not gonna lie, this boss was pretty easy. That's so dumb! The Bission shot a ton of projectiles while occasionally freezing in place and rapidly firing like a machine gun. And as the battle went on, Abyssion's shell broke and it began to shoot more and faster projectiles. After the battle, I've made a few more terrarium cores to upgrade my boots to the terrarium particle sprinters and also the terrarium wings. And then afterwards, I killed the most annoying pillar, in my opinion, the Nebula Pillar. On day 60, I killed the Stardust Pillar, and when the Moon Lord came, I also killed him. The fight wasn't bad or anything. Can I move? Just that my summons wouldn't attack him unless I was like really close to the guy. But anyway, we could finally challenge the final boss of Thorium. I crafted the Doomsayer coin, which would spawn the Primordial's boss. And I waited till night to summon them and got absolutely destroyed. On day 61 to 64, I really needed a DPS boost because I literally did zero damage to the Primordials. I crafted a Shadow Orb staff that summons these orbs on my cursor and can fly to my cursor whenever I wanted to. I farmed Ectoplasm to craft Yuma's Pendant, which was a summon item that increases summon damage and minion count. I killed the Moon Lord one more time to farm some money and I, and I I chose to farm the destroyer because as I kept doing DPS, my little pet and my bunny foot kept making me so much money. And with this money, I started reforging and I made the full set of Stardust Armor. But even with all of that, I kept dying again and again and again. <laughs> On day 65, I took a break and went to do the lunar events. But then on day 66 to 69, it didn't matter because I kept on dying and dying and... <sighs> I decided to see what other summon items that I could craft, and I found one actually, this summon right here. I still kept dying over and over and over again, but during one of my runs, I was actually able to take down the Primordials until they entered their second stage, which is called the Dream Eater, and it proceeded to destroy me. I died so much that I even contemplated changing classes. Are you... <laughs> So but finally, our lucky run happened on day 70. This battle was for, theoretically, the fabric of reality. I summoned my Nebula Worshipper summons and summoned my Shadow Orbs just before the first flame could fight. When it spawned, I was able to do massive amounts of damage by circling him and using my Shadow Staff. When the Endless Tide appeared, I avoided all of his attacks with a similar circling weapon. Their first phases weren't so bad, but when their HP gets lower, they become way more dangerous. I was able to use the Star Wrath when things started getting bad and did not hesitate to use it against the Life Defiler. I was able to wipe out the first flame and did tons of damage to the Endless Tide. The Star Wrath was great when I needed to make distance from the Life Defiler, but eventually I was able to kill the Endless tight as well. So now all I had to do was kill the life defiler. It began attacking frequently and faster and I dodged his aerial attacks but the boss was so fast that sometimes I had to take a hit. When things got bad I healed up the nurse but finally I was able to kill the life defiler and spawned in the dream eater. Now this was for all the marbles. It shot so many projectiles it was actually overwhelming and I had to heal up the nurse so many times. I flew to avoid all of its attack but this thing was super fast so keeping distance was really really hard to do. I also had to keep a constant tab on my health because it inflicted this strong burn effect that could kill me at any moment. But finally I kept using my star raft to lower its HP and using my shadow orb staff, I killed the dream eater. I got an item similar to the one thing in Calamity and I was able to travel like really fast, but I combined the first necklace that we got at the beginning of our game and with the dormant hammer, I crafted Mjolnir. I also made the Ember Summon Staff and Promethean Summon as well. On top of everything, I made the Pyromancer Armor. And for aesthetic purposes, I went with the Shooting Star Bard Armor set, even though, you know, it's for the Bard, but I think it looks pretty cool, so I kept that on. And then I went to test everything out. On day 71 to 75, I shredded the Lunatic Cultist, farmed the Pillars, and killed Moon Lord. I farmed some Ectoplasm for the Frost Moon Spawner and then shredded the Frost Moon. I also shredded the Old One's army, Frost Legion, Solar Eclipse. On day 76 to 83, I waited for the marshes to come, which took a very long time, but when they did, I slaughtered them. I also waited for a Truffle Worm, but that took so long that I had to turn my entire jungle into a mushroom biome. It took until day 83 to get a Truffle Worm, and when I did, I shredded Duke Fisher on. Day 84 to 85, I spent some time working on the house before, you know, putting in some furniture, and then from day 85 to 87, I died to the Dream Eater a few times and killed it a few more times after that. I farmed the Moon Lord for this Radiant Jewel item, which could help me craft this portal. 
portable remote storage, which was awesome because now I could use my storage system from anywhere else on the world. And then from day 88 to day 100, I spent this entire time just building and chilling in my game. I tested out a lot of the blocks for some builds, and I'm pretty proud of the houses that I made in this run. And honestly, now I hope that my builds will be a little bit more better in game. But yeah, other than that, that's kind of it. And I hope you guys enjoyed this playthrough. It was really, really fun. Leave a comment for what mod you want me to play next, and I'll see you guys later.